I've been playing a whole lot of Starfield of late and I thought we'd explore some of this game's secrets because thus far this game has been an absolute pleasure to play. I can't remember the last time I fired up a game and just sunk an unhealthy amount of hours into it as quickly as humanly possible. So I thought it was appropriate to dive in and do exactly what I do best and that's Take a look at the things that are perhaps off the beaten path or things that otherwise might go unnoticed. So I've gathered 10 secrets that I'm certain will be common knowledge in a matter of weeks, if even, for us to collectively enjoy in today's video. I'm sure there's a good chance a part 2 will be on the table in future, but for today, please enjoy 10 secrets in Starfield. There will be timestamps in the description if you happen to know a secret, so if you happen to be watching this at a later date, there's no harm in flicking through the video to find what you're actually looking for. So with everything that needs to be clarified cleared up, let's begin, shall we? Our first secret requires us to come to the Lodge, a location in the city of New Atlantis that you'll no doubt become massively familiar with. If you spend plenty of time exploring, you'll notice plenty of books up for grabs. But we're not just looking for any old book, we're looking for a particular book. On a desk in one of the rooms, we will find a book titled Sir Livingston's Second Journal. It reads as follows. I heard tell from some old timers that although the Earth has suffered its sad fate, that her faithful companion Luna fared much better. Apparently you can still find the remnants of one of the old Apollo missions, something of a secret rite of passage for chairs of constellation, if Banks was to be believed. During one of those rare interludes of calm, while doing other research on Earth, I figured I could spare the time. I was, as they say, in the neighbourhood. It took some serious scanning and a couple of false leads, but I found it. To walk in the same place as those earliest of interstellar explorers, unbelievable what they achieved with such primitive technology. I found the whole experience moving, inspiring. I will advise my successor to do the same. We'll make a proper tradition of it yet. And with that, we receive an objective to visit the Apollo landmark on Earth's moon. Earth is in a bit of a different state to how you might imagine it being in Starfield, having been rendered completely uninhabitable, and that within itself makes it an interesting place to explore, and we'll come back to it in a bit. However, on the moon, we will now have the Apollo landing site as a landmark we can land nearby too. You could probably manually choose to land here, but it would take a bit of guesswork anyway, Upon our arrival, there are three main features. A tattered American flag, and what I would assume is the base of Apollo 11's landing module that got left behind. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the significance of that mission, but for continuity's sake, it was the first ever crewed mission to land on the moon, taking place in July of 1969. On the actual lander, we can find this snazzy collectible snow globe and it depicts two astronauts, presumably Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, chilling on the moon. That being said, which specific mission it is isn't actually specified, but I can only assume it was probably the famous one. Regardless, I really like seeing stuff like this in games revolving around space exploration. It gives me that warm feeling inside. Moving on to our second secret, I already mentioned that Earth has sort of fallen into a state that one could only describe as dilapidated. All that remains now is a barren wasteland of sand and rock. However, there are some landmarks that remain. It's just bloody convenient they happen to be famous ones. You're hardly gonna see an appearance of the Swindon Magic Roundabout, let's put it that way. But these places are interesting to visit nonetheless. However, we need to leave Earth first and find the map markers. And that search will bring us to Aquila City on the planet Aquila where I found a naked guard, which I suppose is nice if you're into that sort of thing, where we need to head to Sinclair's bookstore. There are two books of importance here. The first one is Oliver Twist, but more on that for secret number three. But the other book is titled The Ancient Civilization of Egypt. Purchasing this will give us an objective to visit the Cairo landmark on Earth. What that happens to be is anybody's guess, really. I couldn't tell you. There was really going to be no world in which it wasn't the Giza pyramids, of course, now reduced to little more than piles of stones, there aren't any snazzy crypts or things like that to discover, but the map marker will lead us straight to a snow globe. 
The other book you could acquire from the exact same place in Aquila City was Oliver Twist, which of course grants us access to the London landmark, which appears to be the skyscraper known as the Shard, a 310 meter tall structure that dominates the London skyline. This is where we will find the London snow globe. I think one could say it's an interesting choice for a landmark to represent London as it's nowhere near the most memorable. However, being the tallest building, it's the one that makes the most sense popping its head above the dunes. For our next Earth landmark, we need to leave Earth temporarily and visit New Atlantis on Jemison. We'll need to head into the massive mast building not far from the lodge and hop in the lift going up to the central command slash office of the president. On the president's desk we can find a book titled Our Lost Heritage, which I stole right in front of everyone and lost the book immediately but faced no repercussions, but now we have the New York landmark to visit as well. You can find these places the analogue way if you've got an eye for geography, but this just makes it so much easier. And the landmark to represent New York in this game is of course the Empire State Building, or at least that's what I think it looks like. It's one of the most iconic buildings in the New York skyline, so of course it was going to be that. And if you predicted there'd be another snow globe here, you would be absolutely right. I presume you can drop and drag these around your ship to decorate the place, but that's kind of it. It is cool though. Our fifth secret begins on Earth but ends elsewhere. So, late into the main story, for reasons I'm not going to disclose, we head to this NASA base on Earth, inside which there is a museum. There's absolutely loads of interesting stuff in here, but the thing that I'm interested in right now is the exhibit of a Mars rover. Interacting with the plaque will give us the objective of visiting the Opportunity rover on Mars itself. So with that we get a landmark on the planet of Mars for us to go and visit. I just want to say that Mars in this game looks more alive than Earth does. And there it is, the Opportunity rover. We made it buddy, you don't have to be alone anymore. The Opportunity Rover also has a snow globe. I feel kind of bad for taking its only possession. But hey, this kind of scratches the same itch as the Apollo lander on the moon. It's that mixture of things that we've actually put into space and on other worlds, and then how the science fiction builds and expands upon it. It's a very nice feeling. I also really like how Mars looks in this game, so I'm glad there's something on this barren rock for us to perhaps not discover, but rediscover, if that makes sense. Speaking of cool references to reality, the Alpha Centauri system is a star system with four planets and eight moons and is the closest star system to Sol. So it's fitting that these celestial bodies all appear to be named after real life spacefarers. Gagarin is obviously named after Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet cosmonaut who became the first man in space. Roberta Bondar was the first female Canadian astronaut. Mae Jemison is the first African American woman to go to space. John D. Olivas was also a NASA astronaut. Robert Kerbeam is also another former NASA astronaut who holds the record for the most spacewalks during a single space flight. Gus Grissom was another famous NASA astronaut. I couldn't find any information regarding a Kurtz, my apologies. Kalpana Chawla was the first woman of Indian origin to fly to space, who sadly lost her life aboard the space shuttle Columbia in 2003. Stephen Hawley is another former NASA astronaut who flew on five US space shuttle flights. Jim Lovell was the command module pilot of Apollo 8, the first crewed mission to orbit the moon. James Voss ventured to space five times aboard the space shuttle and International Space Station. And George David Zamka is a former astronaut who piloted the space shuttle Discovery in 2007 on a mission to the International Space Station Completing the list making it very clear that these planets names are referencing human spacefarers from real history. The only one I couldn't quite get a solid answer on is Kurtz. That being said, each and every name on here has clearly earned their place among the stars. Next we've got something of a Skyrim meme that's making a comeback. In the combat skill tree, the graphic for the maxed out crippling perk is an arrow going through somebody's knee. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Random NPCs might also reference this line, albeit much looser, in dialogue. I used to be an explorer too, but then I... No, never mind. It's a long story. For our eighth secret of the day, whilst exploring, you may happen upon a random encounter that is rather amusing. Can I have a moment of your time? Thanks for responding to my hail. We've been 
been trying to contact you about your ship's extended warranty. Your warranty coverage has expired or is about to expire. Due to the uncertainty of the political situation in the settled systems, we think now is a great time to renew your ship's warranty protection plan, or purchase a new one if you lack coverage. Damaging property of the owning group or its subsidiaries will result in a void of the warranty and an inability to purchase plans in the future. This may impact your ability to live a fruitful and carefree life. This is of course a reference to the robocall trend in the US that was a scam regarding people's car's extended warranty. Fortunately in this they're physically there so we can attack them but they'll disappear long before we can destroy them, unfortunately. I'm unsure what specifically activates this encounter but I was nearby to Uranus at the time and I refuse to elaborate further. Our next secret takes us to Titan, Saturn's moon, or at least one of them anyway. On Titan there's a museum filled with many curiosities but the one that's interesting me today is this baseball. It's labelled Playoff Baseball circa 1978, Old Earth, Boston which I feel is a nod to Diamond City in Fallout 4, a settlement in Boston, Massachusetts, that was built inside what was once upon a time a baseball stadium. Anyway, saving the best till last, early on in the game you may pick up a quest without realising it called Mantis, that'll require us to head to the moon of Denebola 1B in the Denebola system, and then down to a secret outpost near what I would presume is the moon's south pole. It's here where we'll have to fight our way through quite a fair few inconsistently leveled enemies, exploring what they refer to as the layer of the Mantis. It appears as if the Mantis at least was some form of vengeful spacefaring crime fighter, and eventually we find our way to the layer of the Mantis where we find this snazzy suit and assume the mantle of the Mantis. The lore we receive via audio recordings found throughout the pathway to the actual layer of the Mantis in this facility tells us that we're effectively Space Batman now, and if we head into the main chamber of the layer we will find a ship that is also now ours. Pressing this button will allow it to be lifted up to the surface where we can hop aboard and fly in a Mantis shaped ship. It's a very lucrative side quest, but it also references Gotham City's Dark Knight himself. And to make things even better, the snazzy futuristic suit looks pretty damn good, bar the helmet. But we can go and fight crime now, if we so wish to do that, or we could go and do crime. That's also something we could do, bringing us relatively smoothly to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, I really hope that you've enjoyed today's little piece of Starfield adventuring. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff if you so wish to do so. Also feel free to use the comment section to let me know which secrets to include in a perspective part 2, as I'm sure we're only just getting started. And of course, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, Please take care and goodbye.